whether you're setting up a part, programming a part, or planning a part for production, selecting the correct tooling, that means the, the tools you're going to use and the tool holdings you're going to use, selecting that is one of the most critical things that you're going to do when operating a CNC machine tool. In this video, I want to talk about how the machine tool operator, the setup technician, or, or the machinist that's setting up the machine tool, how they identify the different tools that are listed in a setup sheet from their CAM software or in the header of their G code program, how they can identify those tools, how they select the correct tools from the tool crib, how they set them up in tool holders, and also a little bit about how to select different tool holders. And so at the end of this video, you should be able to identify the different types of tools that get set up for the program and, and know a little bit about the tool holders and why you would choose one tool holder over another for a certain circumstance. Let's start off by taking a look at some of the tools we used when machining the Y block for our Sterling engine. This is a half inch diameter, three flute end mill. Saying that the tool is three flutes means that it has three cutting edges. In this case, the three cutting edges spiral towards the bottom of the tool. The bottom of the tool is flat, and just as that cutting edge gets to the bottom, you can see there's a little bit of a radius. Tools that are made like this are not intended to plunge directly down into the material. They're intended to, to cut sideways when they're removing material. Uh, in the case where you do need to plunge down in, you would want to program a spiral or a helix, some kind of a move that's moving sideways while it's going down. If you do need to plunge straight down into the material, you might want to use a drill point end mill like this one, or even just a drill. You notice both of these tools have a tip that's pointed, and there's a, there's a they call it a chisel tip. And this is actually designed to move down into the material, push the material out of the way, and then allow the cutting edges to cut the material and the spiral flutes again to pull the chips up out of the hole. Now this next tool looks sort of like a drill, but it's in fact a tap. Taps are used for putting threads in holes that have previously been drilled. You can't use a tap unless you drill the hole first and then the tap has to go in exactly at the location where the hole was. This particular tap is called a form tap. Form taps work by actually, as they go into the hole, they push the material out of the way and, uh, and they don't actually do any cutting, they're actually just forming the material. This is an example of a spiral flute tap that is intended for cutting threads after the hole has been drilled. With a tap like this, you have to either have a through hole, a hole that goes all the way through the part, or you have to leave enough room at the bottom of the hole so that the chips can pile up there, otherwise you will break the tap at the bottom of the hole. This tool is called a ball nose end mill. And ball nose end mills are used to put complex shapes on surfaces of parts, typically. So you can make a concave radius uh, any concave radius that's larger than the radius of the ball nose end mill and you can make any convex radius on a part as long as your tool can fit in without hitting any of the other features on the part. And so these typically have very small depth of cut, very small step over, uh, but can be used to make uh, very complex shapes on the parts. And so now it becomes immediately apparent that one of these tools is not like the others. All of the other tools that we've looked at in this video so far have been solid tools. They've either been made out of solid silicon carbide or they've been made out of high-speed steel. This one is a combination of a steel tool holder with carbide inserts clamped and screwed into place on it. And, and this allows you to have, well, it allows you to have a much bigger tool at less expense the, uh, that allows the carbide inserts to be changed, and in fact on this tool they can be simply loosened and rotated to get more cutting edges, more longer tool life out of it. Um, and um, it can be used as a face mill. We, we often use this one in the lab to do face milling operations. This particular tool, because of its shape, can also do side milling operations if you don't step down too far. And it can make those concave or convex surfaces again as long as the uh, the radius on the part for the concave surface is less than the uh, than the radius on the tool. The last thing I want to talk about in this video is tool holding, the, the fixtures that hold the tools in the spindle of the machine tool. But before I get to that I want to talk just a little bit about the care and feeding of your uh, your tooling. So. 
I have here a half inch solid carbide end mill. It's a three flute end mill. It's very similar to the one that we had in the, in the picture earlier in the video. And you'll notice that I took it out of a plastic box. This plastic box has a function. It's so that if you have multiple tools in the same drawer, they don't bang into each other. One of the features of, of carbide is that it's really hard. Um, and along with being really hard on these cutting edges, which are also really sharp, they, um, if they bang into each other, if two tools bang into each other, the tool will chip. And what it'll do is it'll put uh, either visible chips that you can see with the naked eye, or, or more likely even these microchips, little tiny chips along the cutting edge, along the flute of the tool, that make the tool dull sooner, make it wear unevenly and prematurely, and, and eventually make the tool explode when it's in the middle of cutting your part. And um, we like to avoid having the tools explode when they're in the middle of cutting our parts. So remember, uh, the tool should be in a box when you find it, and it should certainly be in the box when you put it away. If the box you're putting it away in isn't the box that it came out of, um, it's a good idea to remove the label or relabel it so that people who pick up the box won't assume that the tool that's inside the box is the, bo is the tool that's listed on the label. With the exception of the face mill, all of the tools that we've talked about so far in this video were held in either a rigid tool holder or a collet holder. An example of a collet holder, there's a, uh, a nut that screws on the end of it here, and at the top end, there's this taper here and a pull stud. The taper goes up into a mating taper in the spindle, a clamp grabs onto the pull stud, and that clamp is spring-loaded, and it tries to pull the collet holder up into the spindle. There's also two little dogs that come down and they align with the two slots on the holder and that allows the tool to stay aligned with the center of the spindle and to transmit torque from the spindle to the tool. The way the tool is held in the collet holder is pretty simple. There's a taper on the collet and it matches a taper on the inside of the holder. You snap the collet into the collet nut so that it's attached, and then you slide the tool into the collet. Now the collet should be almost exactly the same size as the tool. If it's too big, it won't be able to compress enough to apply enough uh, friction force to hold the tool in place. With the collet holder and a tool holder fixture, you screw the nut into the collet holder, slide the tool in, and tighten the nut down. Now you want to use the torque wrench to tighten the nut down, and you'll turn it until you get one click. It's important to remember that not all collets are made the same. When you're using a tap in the CNC machine tool, you want to use a special tap collet. Now this tap collet has a flat inside it that aligns with the square base at the bottom of the tap. You can tell for sure you've got a tap collet if it slides in and you can't rotate the tap relative to the collet. If you don't use a tap collet when you uh, assemble the tap in the CNC machine, there's a good chance that the tap will spin just a little bit in that tool holder and then it won't be synced because when you do a tapping operation, the feed in has to be synced with the spindle rotation. Now the other type of tool holder that we used in this video was a rigid holder. Now the rigid holder doesn't have a nut on the top like the collet holder does. And in each holder is designed for a specific diameter of tool. And so the tool should just fit in the holder. It'll slide in. And in, in order to transmit the torque, since there's no squeezing force, there's a set screw in the side of the holder. And so that set screw goes in pushes against the tool, that helps transmit the torque. It makes sure that the tool can spin and does not pull out of the holder. In order for that set screw to work, you must use an end mill that has what we call a welded shank. It has to have a flat ground on the edge of the tool so that there's a flat spot for that set screw to go up against.